pivot and talk about AI for a moment. We had Jensen Wong here, who's a big fan of yours, as you know. Yeah, Jensen's awesome. Talk about, talk I mean, about bringing you the first box, by the way, yes. uh, with Ilya, uh, interestingly enough. Yes. Uh, uh, back in 2016, I think. There's a video of Jensen uh, and me unpacking the first AI computer at OpenAI. Right. Uh, so I'm so curious what you think of what's just happened over the past two weeks. While you were dealing with this other uh, uh, headline, series of headlines, there I was mean, a whole other series of headlines open AI, so far, at OpenAI. What did you think? Well, uh, you founded it, co-founded it. Co-founded it, yeah. Um, well, well the, the whole arc of OpenAI, frankly, is a little troubling because the, the, the reason for starting OpenAI was to create a, counter, a counterweight to uh, Google, Google and DeepMind, which at the time had two-thirds of all AI talent and basically infinite money and compute, and there was no, there was no counterweight. It was u unipolar world. And Larry and Paige and I used to be very close friends, and I would stay at his house, and I would talk to Larry into the late hours of the night about AI safety. Um, and it became apparent to me that Larry did not care about AI safety. Um, I think perhaps the thing that gave it away was when he called me a speciest uh, for being pro-humanity, um, as in, you know, like a racist, right. but for species. Um, so I'm like, wait a second, uh, what side are you on, Larry? Um, and, and then I'm like, okay, listen, this guy's calling me a species. He doesn't care about AI safety. Um, we've got to have some counterpoint here because this seems like we could be, this is, this, this is no good. So OpenAI was actually started, and it was meant to be open source. Uh, I named it uh, OpenAI uh, after open source. Um, it is, in fact, closed source, super close. It should be, it should be named, renamed super closed source for maximum profit AI. Um, <laughs> so, because this is what it actually is. <laughs> I mean, Faye loves irony. I mean, in, in fact, a friend of mine has this, says, like, the way to predict outcomes is the most ironic outcome is the most, it, it's like this Occam's razor, like the simplest mm -hmm. sort of explanation is most likely. And uh, my friend Jonah's view is that the most ironic outcome is the most likely. And that's what's happened with OpenAI. Um, it's, it's gone from an open source uh, foundation, a 501c3, to suddenly it's like a $90 billion for-profit corporation with closed source. So I don't know how you go from here to there, but that seems like a, I don't know. How you get, I don't know, if, is this legal? <laughs> I'm so, like, that's legal? So, but, so as you saw Sam Altman get ousted yeah. by somebody you know, Ilya, and Ilya was somebody who was a friend of yours. Yes. You brought him there. Uh, your relationship with Larry Page effectively broke down over you recruiting him away, that's, I think. That's correct. That was the fight. That was the, Larry refused to be friends with me after I recruited Ilya. And so here's Ilya apparently saying something is very wrong. I think we should be concerned about this because I think Ilya actually has a strong moral compass. Um, he thinks about, he, you know, he, he really sweats it over questions of what is right. Um, and if Ilya felt strongly enough to want to, you know, fire Sam, well, I think the world should know what was that reason. Have you talked to him? I've reached out, but he, he doesn't want to talk to anyone. Have you talked to other people behind the scenes? Is this all happening? I've talked to a lot of people. As n nobody, I've not found anyone who knows why. Have, have you? I think we are all still trying to find out. I, I mean, look, one of two things is, is, either it was a serious thing and we should know what it is, or it was not a serious thing and, and then the board should resign. What do you think of Sam Altman? I have mixed feelings about Sam. I, I do, um, you know, the, the ring of power, you know, can corrupt. Um, and this is the ring of power. So, you know, I don't know. I think, I wanna know why Ilya felt so strongly as to fire Sam. This sounds like a serious thing. 
I, d I don't think it was trivial. And I'm quite concerned that this, that there's some, you know, dangerous element of AI that they've, they've created. Discovered. Yes. You think they've discovered something? That'll be my guess. Where are you with your own AI efforts relative to where you think OpenAI is, where you think Google is, where you well, think the others are? I mean, on the AI front, I'm in somewhat of a quandary here because um, I've thought AI could be something that would change the world in, in a significant way since I was in college, I mean, like 30 years ago. Um, so the reason I didn't go build AI f right from the get-go was because I, I was uncertain about which, which edge of the double-edged sword was, would be sharper, the good edge or the bad edge. So I held off on doing anything on AI. I could have created, I think, the leading AI company, and kind of open AI actually kind of is that, um, because I was just uncertain if you make this magic genie, what will happen? Um, you know, whereas I think building sustainable energy technology is much more of a single-edged sword that is single-edged good, making life multi-planetary, I think single-edged good. Um, you know, Starlink, mostly single-edged good. I mean, giving people better connectivity to people that, you know, don't, don't have connectivity or it's too expensive, I think is very, you know, a, a very much a good thing. Um, Starlink w was instrumental, by the way, in halting the Russian advance. Uh, and the Ukrainians said so. Um, so, you know, I think there's, but with AI, you, you've got the magic genie problem. Um, you may think you want a magic genie, but, that, but once you, that genie's out of the bottle, it's hard to say what happens. How now, far are we away from that genie being out of the bottle, you think? We think it's already out. I mean, the genie is certainly poking its head out. Um, the AGI, the idea of artificial general intelligence, given what you now are working on yourself and you know how easy or hard it is to train, to create the inferences, to create the weights. I hope I'm not getting too far in the weeds of just how this works, but those are the basics behind the software end of this. It's funny, you know, all these weights, uh, they're just basically numbers in a comma-separated value file. And that's our digital god, a CSV file. Not that funny. Um, uh, but that's kind of literally what it is. So I, I think it's coming pretty fast, you know. Is that, I mean, uh, you, you've, you've, you famously have admitted to overstating how quickly things will happen. But how quickly do you think this will happen? If you say smarter than the smartest human at anything, yep. it may not be then quite smarter than all humans all machine augmented humans, you know, because we keep people have got computers and stuff. Um, it's a higher bar. But if you say smarter than any, you know, can write as good a novel as, say, J.K. Rowling or discover new physics or invent new technology, um, I would say that we are less than three years from that point. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section.